in the summer months, only buses and pedestrians can move along this street. And with transit, we felt pretty strongly that if you see transit, you'll use it. So we have a frequent transit service that goes right to where people want to go. This is Transit Unplugged. I'm Paul Comfort. Good to be with you on another edition of the world's leading transit executive podcast, Transit Unplugged. On this episode of Transit Unplugged, we go on site to Banff, the tourist town inside the beautiful Canadian National Park of the same name. And we learn about their public transit system with Martin Bean, their chief executive officer. While there, we visited numerous sites involved in providing public transit, and you get to hear them all, the sounds, and enjoy the ambiance of this phenomenal transit system on this episode of Transit Unplugged. You can see the scenes of this episode on our July Transit Unplugged TV show on YouTube. Subscribe today so you won't miss this behind-the-scenes TV show from Banff. We're in downtown Banff today. I'm outside at a bus stop uh, for the 8X bus, and I'm standing here with Martin Bean. Martin, you're the CEO of the Rome Transit System called Bow Valley Regional Transit Services Commission. Great to be with you today, my friend. Yeah, thanks, Paul. Great to be with you. We rode the bus out here from Lake Louise, and we, we got to Lake Louise by riding Rocky Mountaineer from Vancouver. Uh, you told me you used to work for them, huh? I did, yeah. I worked for Rocky Mountaineer probably about uh, whole 10 years ago now, and... Uh, yeah, great organization, a wonderful trip. Yeah, it is. What'd you do there for them? I ran there. They had a bus division, which I ran in Banff. So, oh, cool. Yeah. So tell us something about this town of Banff. We're standing at this bus stop outside, and the, I'm assuming that's the Rocky Mountains behind us, with uh, snow-capped and all these, like, lodge-looking buildings around yeah. us. This is like like Lake Tahoe or something here, man. Yeah, it's awesome. Banff, Banff is a, uh, it's a destination town. It's about 9,000 permanent residents, and tourists coming in and out throughout the winter, summer, all year round. Okay, great. Yeah. And tell me about so, your bus system. So we operate a system that goes from Canmore, which is about 25 minutes from here, all the way out to Lake Louise. So okay. we have Canmore Local Transit, Banff Local Transit, and then we go between the different communities. So we're trying to make it easier for people to move around the valley without needing to bring a, a private vehicle. That's great. So. We're, we're at a stop right now which is uh, uh, the high school hub or something like that? It is. It's our high school transit hub, so it's kind of our main uh, connection point between the different routes. Okay. And people can connect here whichever direction they're going. Do kids ride to school on the bus? We get quite a few kids ride to school on the bus. So our local transit in Canmore is fully free for everybody. Oh, wow. And in Banff, it's free for residents. How do you prove that? Do you have a card or something? We have cards that we uh, people apply for, prove, prove that they're a resident. Gotcha. It's also uh, completely free for anyone 12 and under. Oh, that's great. Now, when I rode here from Lake Louise, it was 10 Canadian dollars, which seemed pretty reasonable because probably a taxi it's cab a, or an Uber would have been multiple times that. It would be a lot more, yeah. yeah. So it, it is very reasonable. It's an easy way for people to get around. And uh, on the way in, the bus went by a train station. Do you have train service here in the town as well? Uh, we don't at this point, but there's... Uh, plans by a private group to see if they can get train service back into the Rockies. So we're waiting to see what happens. So tell me, how long have you been here uh, working for the bus system? I've been here since 2015. And prior to that, I was uh, was in Saskatoon for a few years. And prior to that, was Rocky Mountaineer okay. here. So had a chance to come back to the mountains and, and just love it here. Yeah, this is an awesome town. Martin, we're right off your main drag here on Banff Avenue and we walked inside a cool-looking building. Looks like an old church or something. And tell us about where we're at right now. Yeah, we're in the Heritage Buildings, Parks Canada Visitor Center, and Rome has their customer service center in here as well. If you're a visitor in town, which there's millions of visitors that come here every year, right? Yeah, there, there are <laughs> millions. Yeah, yeah. So I'm here, I'm walking down the main drag, and then I see this building. What can I do when I come in here? You can come in here, you can talk to Parks Canada about uh, various hiking trails or Banff Lake Louise tourism about things to do in, in town and around. Or you can buy your transit passes and get information on all of our services. And then I can just walk outside and hop on a bus. You can. We're pretty yeah. close. Uh, everything's really convenient here. Yeah. And how, what's your frequency like for your uh, fixed routes in the downtown area? Our frequency right now in the winter months is about every 25 minutes. And then it goes down to about every 15 to 20 minutes in the summer months. How did you end up being located here in this building, co-located with all the tourism services? That's a pretty smart idea. 
We found that a lot of transit users were coming here to ask their questions of the Parks Canada staff, and then they'd have to send them to our office. Oh, yeah. And we decided just to make, continue our partnership and move in here. That's smart. Just follow the people where they're going, that huh? Is, that is the best way to do it. And what's your hours in here that you operate? Uh, we're in here in the summer months. It's from uh, about 8 to 6, and now it's from 9 to 5. So, Mark, we're out here on Banff Avenue, just outside of your customer service center, and you were telling me something interesting that the town council decided to do about this main street. Yeah, in 2020, with uh, COVID happening and wanting more space between people, council closed this street to traffic other than pedestrians, so that people could walk and shop and have lots of lots of ample space. In 2021, transit was added to this street, so now. In the summer months, only buses and pedestrians can move along this street. Where do all the cars go? They just have to go around it, huh? The cars, there's a detour around a couple blocks out of the way. And with transit, we felt pretty strongly that if you see transit, you'll use it. So we have a frequent transit service that goes right to where people want to go. And up on the mountain behind us, you told me, uh, how can I get to the top of that mountain? You can take our Route 1 to Sulphur Mountain Gondola and to the base of the gondola. And then uh, thousands of people do it every year and ride it right up to the top. There's beautiful visitor center and restaurants up there. Restaurants too? Restaurants too. Oh man, I hope I get a chance to do that today. So in downtown Banff here, have you, you ever get bears or elk or anything like that? Every once in a while, we'll get a bear that you'll hear about coming into town. And in fact, one of them was in one of the hotel lobbies a, a couple of years ago. <laughs> An unwelcome guest, huh? An unwelcome guest. What about uh, other wildlife? A uh, lot of elk. Okay. Yeah, and primarily elk. And you see a lot of deer in town as well. So, Martin, I love all your buses, how they are. Um, what do you got on them here? This is amazing, all this wildlife. Yeah, we have, uh, on all our buses, we have animals from the Bull Valley, so Banff National Park or the area around it. And our brand standard dictates which animals we can use. And they all have to be unique, or if we're reusing an animal, it has to be in a different season. So we'll have a, a grizzly bear in the summer, and then we might have a grizzly bear in the winter as well. Oh, like, and it shows different scenery. Like this bus has... Uh green leaves and what are they elk or something or deer those are deer on this bus so yeah we have we'll have uh fox bus we'll have uh, bear moose bison lots of different animals and every bus has a different wrap they are and we purchase our wraps through local wildlife photographers so some pretty renowned photographers that's awesome all right let's head into your office sounds good So we came in your front door and we're right at your driver check-in area? It is, this is our lunchroom driver check-in area. We've been in this building for about two years, so we're, we're pretty excited to be here. It's, uh, we can store 12 buses inside, about another 20 under a canopy, and lots of room for expansion. So it's way better than starting buses at minus 30 uh, outside. Absolutely, and so when a driver comes in, is it self-check-in? It is, they can check in on the iPad just behind us here. And they can look up on the screen, see which buses are available, which are down for maintenance. They can also see live locations of buses and any other interesting news we want to share. Oh, that's awesome. And uh, then they just go out and get their bus? They go out and get their bus. They may stop at our dispatch office if they've got something to ask, but they can just head out into the shop and uh, do the pre-trip. And how long do you give the drivers to do a pre-trip here? We're about 45 minutes from the time that they arrive till the time of their first pickup, which is uh, usually about a five, seven minute drive. So we're here at your bus simulator. Tell me about this. Yeah, when we built this building, we decided we wanted to have a training center that would include a, uh, a fare box, uh, anything that drivers need to learn that when they're not behind the wheel. So we uh, sourced this simulator actually from a company in France and we did it through an RFP process and we chose this one because they could customize it to our streets. Oh. So we've got Banff streets, we've got our actual bus stops, our garage, some of our turnarounds. So it's pretty realistic. That's and great. We, it's part of, is it part of refresher training or new driver training? It's part, it's part of both actually. Okay, yeah. So we can create scenarios that you wouldn't be able to do out on the road. So like having a skateboarder go out right in front of the bus. Oh yeah. And so we can introduce new drivers to it and then use it for some refresher as well. Tell us about where we're at. 
We're up the Rome Transit Operations and Training Facility. So we're out in the industrial area in Banff. This is where we do our training of drivers, uh, store our buses, and we do all the operational stuff. We have, we have a bus wash inside, parking for 12 buses inside, and then another 20 out here under the canopy. Just keeps the snow off them. So tell me about um, recovery from the pandemic. I know that when the pandemic happened, probably a lot of the town kind of shut down, but you're coming back strong on ridership, right? We are, the pandemic, we dropped our ridership about 90%. So it was, it was huge. We were uh, discouraging people from coming course, here at that right. time. But in 2022, we carried 1.65 million riders, which was about 8% above our previous record of 2019. So ridership is coming back strong. And the, uh, the main service area, talk to us about the population versus, you know, how many people sure. actually live here versus visitors and then compare that to your ridership numbers. You can see, obviously, who's riding a lot. Yeah, the, the whole area of the Bow Valley, we have about 25,000 population of full-time residents. And visitors are, you know, before the pandemic, over 4 million coming through the park gates every year. And it's probably increased since then. So our ridership is uh, a lot of locals, but also a tremendous number of visitors. We're out here in pristine nature in Banff, and you've taken a big step toward making sure that your fleet also is environmentally uh, sound, right? We have. I first start with the building. This, this building has no furnace. It's fully heated by a district heat system, which heats four buildings in the area by burning uh, unused pallets. Really? Old, old, any kind of scrap wood can be fed in there and used to heat the building in a really environmentally friendly way. And then in addition, there's 680 solar panels on the top of the building. So that's a, that's a start. That's enough to power three of our electric buses, uh, plus the whole use for the building. And then we also have uh, 10 Proterra electric buses now. We had five in service last year, and we've just receiving, I think the last one is, is due in right away. So that's yeah, great. it's about a third of our fleet. Amazing. And um, you do your charging inside? All of our charging is done inside at this point. Any trouble with the grid or anything? You've got enough power here to handle all that? Yeah, we, we have enough power at this point. As we grow, we're going to be doing more investigation, working with the utility to figure out what needs to be done. And so this is also a driver training area where we're standing. Tell me about that. It is. Uh, because we do a lot more operations in the summer, we end up hiring drivers seasonally. So this year, we're hiring about 25 to 28 new drivers for the summer months. So... We've been hiring since January for drivers to be ready to go at the beginning of May. So we've got a, a cone course set up around us here. So we do some of our training, backing up and driving forwards through the cones in this area. And then a lot more, both in the simulator and out on the road. And how are you doing when it comes to drivers? So many transit systems are having trouble recruiting and retaining employees. We got ourselves uh, qualified as a uh, licensed training facility. So we train drivers from a uh, car driver license, train them to the point where we can send them to, we book a road test and they go and get their license. So that's really helped us this year. Last year we were pretty short and ended up cutting service because of it. This year we're in good shape. We're in your garage near your power control system. Tell us how all this works. So these power control systems are the, uh, the brains of charging the, the buses. They feed dispensers that we put up in the ceiling and they lower from the ceiling by a, a remote control. With this building, we were building it to be fairly environmentally efficient with a small envelope. So there's not a lot of room to put pedestals between the different bays. So we decided to get the, the cables up and out of the way. Okay. So this. This unit will feed uh, two dispensers. And so you could charge two buses at one time. They actually charge sequentially. So you can plug two in, one will charge up, and then it'll switch over to the other one automatically. And about how long does it take to, uh, to charge a bus? You do it at nighttime, I'm assuming? Primarily at nighttime or if we have a break during the day. They're about four and a half hours from empty. So depending on how much charge the bus comes in with, it's anywhere from two to four and a half hours. And up here in the mountains, how many miles are you getting off a of charge, would you say? It depends on the time of year. Okay. So in the summer months, we can go about 18 hours and still have 30% charge left. In the winter time, we've done lots of learning and we'll go about 12 hours on a charge. Very good. That's a beautiful bus, man. So tell me about what's on your bus here. So that's, uh, that animal's uh, Martin. 
and it's got the animal and then the Rome logo, which includes the paw prints, and the paw prints have to match the animal that's on the bus. Oh, that's cool. Now, what does Rome stand for? Because your service is the Bow Valley Regional Transit, right? Yeah, so uh, in 2008, the town of Banff started a transit service and called it Rome Transit uh, for roaming throughout the valley. Oh, okay. And then in 2011, they uh, decided to collaborate with Town of the Canmore and Improvement District 9, which is everything else in the National Park, and formed the Bow Valley Regional Transit Services Commission. So it's a collaboration of three municipalities to provide transit throughout the whole region. And do each of them like provide a member to your board or how does, how does your governor do They work? do. So I report to two councillors from each community, so okay. six, six in total. And they all put in money? They do, yeah. So it's a evil, even split for the administration side and then each community pays the portion of transit for the service that they have. So Banff Local Transit, the town of Banff pays 100%. Okay. The Canmore Banff Service, each community pays 50%. So. Very good. So, and, and is your funding pretty secure? They, you're good every it's, year? Our funding is secure. We, uh, we get a fair amount off Fairbox revenue. Uh, recently, paid parking has come into place in both Banff and Canmore, from which we get a portion. And from our municipal governments, we have a really strong commitment to transit. That's great. And then we also work with Parks Canada, and they provide funding for services to some of their destinations. Makes sense, yeah. That way they don't have to, right? You do it for them. That's right, yeah. That's great. So what do you got planned for the future? future is just continuing to grow on what we have, making transit uh, more frequent, easier, more environmentally friendly. We also subcontract the service coming out from Calgary in the summer months. So we think that will continue to grow, bringing people from there to here without a private vehicle. And then they transfer onto our services. Oh, yeah, that's when good. When they get here. So. Yeah, so you're really trying to make this community where you don't have to have a car. Yes, definitely. And we have a lot of vehicle congestion in the summer months, and we're oh, sure, doing our yeah. part to try and reduce that. I noticed there's, uh, because this is a tourist town, you've got a lot of tourist buses going around here. How do you all interact with them? Uh, we offer complimentary service, and they will put people on our transit service in order to access theirs. Okay. Uh, we also try and work with as many active modes of transportation as we can. So biking, people will bike between Canmore and Banff. There's a trail, and then they'll put their bikes on the bus to, to go back, so they only have to bike one way. We're having lunch down here at a great, uh, what's the name of this restaurant? Oh. Park Distillery. Park Distillery, yeah. And they're making some uh, distilled beverages back there right now. But we're on the main drag again here on Banff Avenue. And you told me something very interesting, I think, about your funding sources. Tell me about that. Yeah, with the majority of the hotels in Banff, we have a partnership where they pay us a monthly fee and we provide free transit for their guests. So when a guest checks in, they get a three-day transit pass and they can leave their car parked. If they came with a car, they leave it parked in the underground garage at their hotel and they just use transit to get around town while they're here that is beautiful wow and a lot of people do it a lot of people do it and hotels really like it because it gives them a, uh, a marketing edge as well well thanks for showing us around your yard and downtown you've got an amazing transit system here martin congratulations yeah thanks paul we uh we live in a wonderful place and we're glad to show it off Hi, this is Mike Bismeyer, Transit and Kindness Advocate, and this is Mike's Minute, where we talk about mentorship, leadership, and kindness with the hopes it'll inspire you to pay it forward. I was super excited this week to hear this guest, Martin Bean, a longtime friend and peer in the industry, who I've had the pleasure of working alongside and partnering with on a few projects over the years that I've been in transit. Another true example of leadership in all things transit. You can hear it every time Martin talks about the Rome system, both his love for the community that he serves and the service they provide. Innovation is always at the forefront, such as their environmentally efficient garage, solar project, zero emissions journey, and their driver simulator, which directly led to their proactive approach on handling their driver shortage. Often I mention the term mentor by default, which I explain as when you're simply doing your job passionately and folks by default emulate your behavior based on what they are observing. I would definitely count Martin as one of those in the industry. Every time we chat or spend time together, I'm inspired by a new tidbit his team and or the community that the service reflects. Mentorship, leadership, and kindness. Martin encapsulates all those traits. He's been a guest that is inputted on the importance of mentorship in the past. And again, I've had the pleasure of working alongside him and the staff that he leads, seeing the impact that he has on his team and transit in general. Lastly, as a special memory for me, 
Martin reached out during the pandemic to let me know that the kindness is cool messaging resonated well with the Rome team, and they had decided to run that message on their destination signs. Super cool. If you've never been to Banff, you'll be blown away. Pictures don't do it justice. And if you have the pleasure of visiting, make sure to ride the bus service and to stop by and have a coffee with Martin. I'm sure it'll be two of the best that you ever do on the road. Have a great week. Thanks for listening. Kindness is cool. During our recent trip to Western Canada, we filmed three episodes of Transit Unplugged TV. The first is the May monthly episode from our trip to Vancouver and the TransLink Transit System, which you can watch now on YouTube. Scenes from today's podcast in Banff will be seen on our July monthly episode. Between those two is a very special show, unlike any we've filmed before. A scenic wonderland aboard the Rocky Mountaineer excursion train. The sights and sounds speak for themselves, and I believe you'll be transfixed by the wonder of the Rocky Mountains and the soundtrack we've matched with it from on board the train. I asked our film director and principal videographer, award-winning Jamie Quadra, to share some about how he filmed it and edited this very special one-of-a-kind episode of Transit Unplugged TV. I just had an amazing experience in Canada. I have, you know, a special relationship with this this country, especially Vancouver, because I studied there years ago, many, many years ago. I came back after 30 years of something. I think we... You know, we we have uh, an amazing uh, team together. And for me, it was uh, a unique experience as a director, as a video director. We started like a year ago with Transient Plague. But these three episodes for me are very special. You know, we film in Vancouver. It's one of the episodes where, uh, you know, my first time uh, when I just engage in some point with transportation, was in Vancouver when I was like 17 years old um, because I was so surprised uh, about the, you know, the punctuality of the buses. Um, everything is, was coordinated between, you know, the, the bus system with the sea bus and the sky train. Uh, every, everything w- was very, very easy for me for transportation, for transportation myself because I was young. I don't, ha- I don't have a car at that point, you know, of my life in Vancouver. I was with my aunt. I was in my aunt's house. Yes, I, I felt in love with transportation uh, uh, in that point. I always talk about that. We had an amazing experience filming these modes of transportation on this amazing uh, city, you know, uh, just grow and grow uh, in, in a good way. Then Vancouver is a very interesting and beautiful city. After that, we have uh, Banff. Banff was an amazing show again because I love, I love you know mountains and snow and you know pines. Uh, I think we have uh, a beautiful piece there <clears throat> with the interviews um, and the, the transportation there was amazing too. And this special treat we had uh, with the gondola. Oh, well, that was amazing! It, actually, it's the higher gondola I ever <laughs> went. Uh, was an amazing experience. And finally, that, that experience, the experience was the, you know, Rocky Mountaineer. Oh my God, that was amazing. Thank God we have a plan for that. <laughs> Before, you know, as a director, I, I thought about, you know, more cinematic kind of uh, episode with this one, a treat for our audience, for our people. Uh, I think this one is going to be, you know, uh, a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful example of what you, a destination you can go. This train uh, reminds me uh, one train I we have in Peru, my country, uh, to go to Machu Picchu, you know, this uh, all crystal, uh, you know, ceiling but this one is very, very special because uh, they have a whole concept, you know, about uh, enjoying the ride. It's like two days. We spent spend two days there enjoying, you know, just the view. Well, I was working the whole time, but <laughs> also enjoying the view. But, but it was an amazing experience. I think they have this uh, very unique concept about no Wi-Fi. Just put these people together. They don't know each other. But they have to because they don't have Wi-Fi. They have this 
view this this amazing and and uh, and you know um, the scenery changes. You know, it, you know, dry mountains, then full of pines, mountains, then a huge lake, then you know, up, up, up to the mountains, the Rocky Mountains. No, you have to to experience this this to understand or or watch our video <laughs> because i think we got it in the video we got it in the video you're gonna enjoy you your your audience gonna enjoy please subscribe to transit and plug tv because th this episode is very special and the whole the whole transit and plug tv are amazing the whole channel we have a lot uh, beautiful content there until next time see you be sure to subscribe to our Transit Unplugged TV channel on YouTube to catch this episode from the Rocky Mountaineer and every monthly episode, normally under 15 minutes, for an excursion into transportation excellence. Transit Unplugged TV, made by and for the public transportation industry. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Transit Unplugged with our special guest, Martin Bean, CEO of Rome Transit in beautiful Banff, Alberta, Canada. Now, coming up next week on Transit Unplugged, we have Salita Reynolds, Chief Innovation Officer and Interim Chief People Officer at LA Metro. And in our leadership segment, we have Josh Cohen of Mobility Leadership Advisors. Let's hear a little bit from each of those interviews. How can the public right of way and the transportation system that collectively in this region we manage and operate and own, how can that be the stage for fellowship and in so doing, spark people's imagination about what streets could really be and, and what purposes they could serve in the future. If you've moved into a role just because it's been provided for you or, or that's what you're supposed to do, but it's not aligned with your strengths, you're not gonna be happy. I see folks all the time that are in roles that they're just not aligned with as far as their strengths. So getting clear on what those strengths are and then trying to think about what are ways that I can, can move towards that, I think are super critical aspects there for anyone who wants to move in their career. If you have a question, comment, or want to be a guest on the show, feel free to email us anytime at info at transitunplugged.com. So until next week, ride safe, ride happy.